Hey, welcome to Ministry Grid. This is Pastor Derwin Gray of Transformation Church. We are in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and I am sitting with my good friend, Brad Lominick, mm -hmm. the, the, the man of catalyst himself. Yeah. And, and so we're going to talk about young leaders and, and developing them. Uh, tell me about your passion to develop young leaders. And you've done, done that. I mean, God has used catalysts, not in epic ways, not in fantastic ways, but in ep Fantastic ways. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's a Durham Gray. Right that there. That is a Durham Grayism. Hashtag Eptastic. Very can good. I, can I tweet that? Tweet it, my brother. Tweet it. And it takes three times before I can then claim it for my own. That's is that, true. Is that, the, that's, is that the rule? That's kind of why it works. So, so okay. So, when we think about you, when we think about Catalyst, we, we go, wow, this is just simply astonishing. But what is the core conviction that moved you to develop and lead Catalyst the way you have to? influence young leaders? Well, the, I mean, the simple sort of initial vision was that there was a bunch of us who were in our 20s who were working with John Maxwell and doing conferences and, and, and doing leadership events. And we looked around and just said, we love what we're doing, but we want to create something that will impact us. Hmm. And, and so the original felt need was that we felt like we had um, very specific things we wanted to accomplish together. We wanted to gather our peers. We wanted to create an environment that was fun. We wanted to do something that would feel like it was it was innovative and it was out of the box and it was creative and there was lots of energy. Um, and but it really was built around this premise that that as a twenty something, we wanted to do something significant, and we were the customer of it. And I think um, I think a lot of the 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 sense that the brand of Catalyst is about young leaders was built around that premise mm -hmm. that. We're a bunch of 20-somethings who are really interested in impacting other 20-somethings. Um, and I think that's one of the lessons we've learned is, is even as I've led it, you know, I, I think there's that sense that once you kind of get older, you need to move out of the way and let other young leaders step in. And because t young leaders, by their very core, they want to do something that it feels like they're going to change the world, but it's kind of built around them. They, mm -hmm. You know, they. Mm -hmm. I think I think the generational transfer in leadership is always the the hard thing. When you get older, you start to think, well, they have to wait their turn. They have to be willing to sit under my authority before they can have a chance. And you you start lining up all these barriers versus saying, for young leaders who are part of of our community or our congregation or our organization or our business, let them let them flourish. Let them go. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to make mistakes. They're going to they're going to figure it out on the go. But let them create what they feel like God has called them to for this season of life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that was a big lesson, again, for me, that I learned watching John Maxwell let us run with this vision. And he said, hey, I'll fund it. I'll be the person behind you that is cheering you on. I'll be this, this sage that's on the side of the stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I'll be willing to sit in the front row and, and, and be part of this. But this needs to be your deal. Mm. And it was such a refreshing um, lesson for me at that stage of life to watch John, who was a legend and had trained millions of leaders to say, it's time for you guys to run with this and I'm gonna let you create it on your own and I'm gonna let you give it your own identity and your own ethos. And so big lesson for us when we started. Yeah, yeah you know, speaking of John Maxwell, um, uh, he influenced my life even before I knew it, and it was through my high school coach. Uh, I went to a high, high school called Converse Judson High School right outside of San Antonio, Texas, and uh, we are a legendary football program. And so my background is my parents were teenagers when they had me. They both struggled with issues, uh, high crime, high poverty, no education. Grandmother raised me, uh, but I knew football was a way out. And God in his good hand of providence allowed me to go to Judson. And so what we did uh, there was before training camp, we would spend four days in a classroom, high school kids, led by our coach, D.W. Rutledge, reading books by John Maxwell and Zig Z Ziglar. Now that I look back, I'm going, that was amazing. Yeah. But for our head coach, to invest in us as men. Uh, we never talked about winning, yet we have the most state championships in the state of Texas, Class 5A, the most appearances in Class 5A. Uh, he's in the Texas High School Football 
Hall of Fame. Mm. And so I'm sitting here today because of the seeds of leadership that he sowed into my heart. Like even now, um, I call, you know, I ca call him coach. We've talked recently and he was asking me to do an event for him. And I was like, coach, I will still run through a brick wall right. for you. However, I might pull a hamstring getting there. And when I hit the wall, <laughs> I won't hit it like I used to, but I'll do it for you because I know that you love me. Yeah. And so those coaches not only taught me how to be a great football player that led to an NFL career, but they cared enough about me to make me whole. They didn't want me just to be a hero on the field and a zero off. They wanted me to be a husband. They wanted yeah. me to be a father. And so they would translate coaching experiences and game experiences to what are you going to do when it's the fourth quarter of your marriage and things are tough? You know, and, and so even now, uh, so that passion for leadership development before I was a follower of Jesus, God and his common grace um, really, really use them. And, and so now at Transformation Church, developing young leaders is really, really important. Now, Brad, help me with, with this, because this is one of the things that I see that in our generation, things happen faster. Right. Um, at Sweet Transformation change. Church, we have literally in three years, we've grown from 170 to 2,500. We've, we've got three campuses. We're in the middle of building a $5.6 million building. Now, um, there are pastors that I know that I respect with powerful ministries that that didn't happen to till year 10. And so what I'm seeing is there can be this experience gap mm -hmm. where you have high success, but your character isn't ready for it. So talk to me about you've got older sages who know they need to develop but then you got young, hungry guys and gals who, man, the, the, the character isn't quite there. So how do you deal with that? Well, I think the biggest thing is to, is to make sure that, um, one, you're not creating barriers for young leaders to, to thrive. And What's an example of some barriers, say, if a local church pastor is watching right, right now? What, yeah. what, are, what are some barriers? I, I, think, I think one thing would be, that we, we tend to have this, again, this generational thought that is you have to be a certain age in order to really have influence. Mm -hmm. And that's built on the way we were taught or the way every generation has been brought up. You know, that sense of, uh, for example, you know, a lot of pastors who are sort of the generation above us or before us, they felt like they wouldn't hand off anything that was of, of significance to somebody who was younger than them until there was a certain age. And it might have been 40, might have been 45, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. Nowadays, we know there's a new reality that says, if you don't hand me off something that feels like I'm part of, of the team, I'm gonna go do my own thing. And that's, I think that is a new reality among young leaders that we have to watch for in the sense of, well, does it really make sense for me to just go run and start a new thing? Not necessarily. But there also has to be a, an understanding with the older leaders that says, if I don't hand it off and mm -hmm. I don't give them influence and responsibility, then they are going to go somewhere else. The, the key, though, to me is that you make sure that you give uh, authority and responsibility. And that, that's, we've, we've watched this happen at Catalyst, and we've got a bunch of 20-somethings. And that, that sense of a lot of us want to give responsibility because that's tasks. That's go do something. Mm -hmm. I need you to go get that done for me so mm -hmm. I can, I can, we can check that off the list. Mm -hmm. If you don't give them authority in the sense that if it's okay, if, you know what, if you fail at this, mm -hmm. then it's on you. Mm -hmm. And it's not if you fail, then it's on me. Mm -hmm. And you were just carrying out something mm -hmm. on my behalf. Mm -hmm. So I think understanding those two things having to go together, mm -hmm. but you never want to give authority before they're ready. Mm -hmm. and, and what the other side of that is, is we end up saying, well, you may not be ready, but I, I feel like I have to give you something. Mm -hmm. And then I end up giving you way too much authority yeah. and you fail at that. And then, so you got to balance those. Well, well you, you know, Brad, that, that, that just as you're speaking, um, there's like this aha moment that a transformation church and, 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 you know, we're growing, we're developing, we're maturing. But I think that aha moment is that for us, you know, you've got the authority, you've got the responsibility. And I think that missing piece is, what is the heart formation that we want to see in you? So for yeah. us at Transformation Church, we have our five C's. The first thing is character because a gifted young person without character is a tyrant and they're going to be a dragon 
and, and there's going to be a lot of people who get burned. The next is competency. You know, have I equipped you as best I can for you to do what I'm giving you authority and responsibility for? Are you catalytic? And then collaboration. Are you a team pl player? Teamwork makes the dream work. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, it's amazing what can get accomplished when no one cares who gets the credit. Yep. And then the last thing is the chemistry piece. Like, are you a friend? So um, I agree with you wholeheartedly. There needs to be authority. There needs to be responsibility. But on our, our part, we have to go, I see your gifting. Now let's get your character yes. up to pace. And so yeah. one of the things that I say to our young le le leaders is this, is that your gifts should always be trying to catch up to your character. Yeah, not the opposite. Where I think the opposite is our gifts are running ahead of our character and we're trying to c catch up to it. What, 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 what would you say is, from your experience, which is vast, what are young leaders wanting to say to older le leaders and what are older leaders wanting to say to young leaders as it pertains to a passion to develop? Yeah, I think, young I think leaders? young leaders are, are in general, wanting to say, let me lead, mm -hmm. um, give me a chance, I'm ready, uh, I'm, or, uh, I, wanna, I wanna try it. Um, I think older leaders are saying, shut up, in many ways, they wanna be saying <laughs> that, but they, they wanna yeah. say that, shut up and sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know it all, you haven't experienced life yet, you, you, know, you think you know it all, but you really don't. So like, so like if you're in your mom's basement in your underwear, and just got done with like, like you uh, mean me or <laughs> not not you <laughs> like so like if a young guy you yeah. know you're living with your yeah, mom yeah. and you're playing video games all day it's probably not a good idea to tweet leadership blogs or probably quote. not <laughs> yes yeah if you just got through playing Call of Duty yeah and uh, yeah you're you're on your blog and you're spouting certain wisdom you, probably, you may not have a, a necessarily a platform to stand okay. on okay yeah okay. but I think that's a big one is that sense of of mentoring yeah. that's another piece you yeah. know. And we've lost the, I think we've lost the, the beauty and the, and the science and the art of mentoring. Who's mentored you? Uh, well, Maxwell, John Maxwell has. Um, and I think a lot of people, you know, Andy Stanley has. Um, I had a great mentor when I was um, just out of college, a guy named Bob Foster. Spent five years working on a ranch mm -hmm. in Colorado. And we spent, we, we had breakfast every Friday morning. And um, a cowboy who was 75 and I was 25. Mm -hmm. And that was life giving to me, but also it was it was foundational for me. I was mm -hmm. in my 20s, and he was he was giving me all this wisdom that I could have said, you know, you're 75, you don't understand, mm -hmm. you're not you're not connected to my generation. But my posture had to be one of humility and saying, mm -hmm. I want to learn from you. Mm -hmm. And there may be things I don't necessarily want to hear, mm -hmm. but I know I need to hear. Mm -hmm. And his posture was, I'm seeing myself in you. Mm -hmm. And I want to help you to finish well, mm -hmm. you know. And, and but we both had to sort of put down our guns mm -hmm. and come to the table together. And I think we've lost a little bit, a little bit of that in the church. Um, older leaders are sometimes afraid because this is the first generation, the current millennial generation in their 20s and early 30s, the first generation ever in the history, maybe of mankind, that the knowledge factor is higher mm -hmm. than many of those who've gone before them mm -hmm. who are 40, 50 years older because mm -hmm. of technology. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of reasons that mm -hmm. I can sit across from somebody even at 40 who's 20 and they know way more than I do about certain things. Well, that's a, that's a significant shift, mm -hmm. paradigm shift in, in mentoring. Yeah. And we've got to be okay with the fact that this 20-year-old can actually mentor me in some ways. Uh, as much as I can mentor them, but I think we got to regain that, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the church. You know, especially that generational transfer of leadership because it's vital. It is, and 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 I and I think it comes from being secure in who you are in Christ. Yes, and I think it comes from having the Father's affirmation to say, "I'm pleased with you because of Christ in you." Uh, my first year in the uh, the NFL the defensive backs, we were uh, watching film, and we're getting ready to play the Seattle Seahawks. I was a fourth round draft pick. Uh, Ray Buchanan was a third round draft pick. He, he, he went on to be an all pro. And so we're watching film, and we're the young guys with these, you know, these 33, 34 year old right. dudes. I mean, they got gray yeah, hair ancient. in their beards. <laughs> you know, for, for the NFL, yeah. that's old. Yeah. And so we're watching film, and all the other older guys are quiet. And me and Ray, the young, young guy, like, when we get in the game, man, we're going we're gonna to do this and we're going to do that. When I got in that game, 
these grown men were moving at light speed. I was like a deer <laughs> in the headlights. Yeah. And I got hit, oh, hit so hard one time, my head hit the ground first and a tight end from Seattle stood over me. His beard was coming out. I, could be, I had peach fuzz. His beard was coming out of his chin strap. And he says, welcome to the NFL, <laughs> rookie. And so at the next game film session, me and the rookie were quiet. Yeah. And all the <laughs> veterans were laughing. We're like, we just wanted to let you see mm -hmm. that you may have watched film, but when you play the game, yeah. there's a difference. And yeah. so I think there's this element of as a young leader to say, I've watched some film, but you've played in the game. Would you, would you tell me about the game? Yeah. I really, really want to learn. Yeah, and the then, posture of leaning in. Yeah. yeah, and then the older leader saying, you know what, it would be my honor to, because I'm not threatened by you. Yeah. Uh, and when we're secure in Christ, there's no longer a need to be threatened. Well, Brad, thank you so much, and thank you for all that you do through Catalyst. And thank you guys for checking us out. This is Ministry Grid. This is Brad of Catalyst, Derwin Gray of Transformation Church. Peace. We're out.